I'm Anthony Reid from the Geological Survey and I'm here today to talk with Christy Girard, Manager of the South Australian Resources Information Gateway, or as most of us know it, SARIG. Thanks for joining us, Christy. What would you say the main benefits are of SARIG for the resources industry? So, Anthony, I would really start to think about it's about the data. SARIG is um, it's a portal where you can come on and you can access information around um, geoscience. So we from the minerals and the petroleum side. So the government, we've been collecting data for 130 years um, through the, the Mining Act or the Petroleum Geothermal Act. And this data is, is you know, it's come to the government, we're custodians of mm, it. Mm. And once it becomes open file, it's all coming out of SARIG. Yeah, right. So when you think of it as kind of like a blank canvas, um, SARIG, what it does, it starts to, to add layer upon layer upon layer of data. So that industry data that's been reported to the government, but also um, the the data that the, the Geological Survey has has done. So all of the, the you know, the pre-competitive data and acquisitions. So um, sort of like the the, the GCAS lately. GCAS, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mapping, so, mapping, drill holes, everything is in it. Absolutely. So you start to, to be able to come onto SARIG and turn all of this, these layers on. And you can't, that's not all you can do, but you can come in and actually you can interrogate that data. Yeah, so, so SARIG is almost considered a database, but in, in some sense, it's much more than that. What, how, is it, how is it possible for SARIG to deliver such that, that's such a broad range of information? Sure, like it's often uh, called a database. Yeah. However, SARIG, it doesn't hold any data, but what we do is we network that data from mm. about 12 databases behind. And how we use SARIG is we put a lot of um, effort into the, the user interface so people don't feel like they're actually having to search a different data source, say, for drilling or a different data source for so a mineral occurrences. Mm. They can actually just come into SARIG, they can draw a box over an area, um, and you can actually tap into all of those different 12 data sources. Yeah. So you don't feel like you're um, going to another one, data, by one, one, one by one. One by one. Yeah, That's sure. It. It's a seamless. We yeah. have a lot of hyperlinks that people can just click onto and, um, and start. You don't even really feel like you're data mining. You just sort of sent to where you want to go. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. We hopefully get it in about three clicks, but the more you sort of want to data mine, the more you'll, you'll get out of SARIG. So technology is really changing the way we work. So are, are there challenges or innovations that have emerged in, in the way that you deliver this, this geoscience information? I think generally we would, you know, we would go into a, a portal like SARIG and we would, um, we would just go in and we would download the format that mm. we like. Um, our data, it does change. So our mineral tenement data is, is updated daily. So um, that sort of act of having to come in and, and access that data. Sort of manually. Manually, like, yeah. manually. has definitely changed with technology now as we've, we've moved to, to API. Yep. So API, just for those unfamiliar with it, means? So an API is an application pro programming interface. I see. So really what we're talking about here is machine to machine. So it's a service. So you no longer have to come on and actually um, download, um, come on into the actual portal and download. You can actually script a download um, using your GI application. And basically you only have to refresh that script. So where this has moved with technology is that um, you are able to access government data um, in a way that um, you can actually pull it in into your software and you can utilize it. So it's um, really sort of moved the technology along. So, so in terms of um, future developments for SARIC, I mean, it's, it's a well-known and award-winning um, uh, interface. Um, where is it going? What's, what's the big new things that are going to be coming out with SARIG? So one of our current developments at the moment is around our geochemistry data. Mm. So with, again, technology, it is, you know, there is so much data coming out of geoscience now. And so one of our biggest data sets is our geochem. And the way that we're delivering it, um, you know, we really want to sort of, I suppose, uh, do it how the, the industry wants. And yeah. at the moment, um, we're not quite nailing that. So um, what we're going to do this year is we're going to... Um, put out a suite of uh, geochem maximum down hole uh, sort of suite of geochem for, for, for major commodities. And we're also going, we're actually building like a custom um, way, a custom build that you can come in and actually custom choose your commodities or analytes that you want to um, sort of uh, take away in SARIG. Um, and you'll actually get it in the file format that the, the industry is looking for. So I think they're going to be really, really excited that will be a huge about this. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and one other development that we're kind of, um, we're starting to do the requirements for is upgrading our publication reports area. So right, that's right. all of those rich maps and, and reports mm. um, and the industry company reports as well. So how people are going to be accessing them. 
which is really interesting because we're looking to expand our product catalogue, which again, we talked about those APIs because now technology, we're serving that as a um, catalogue service for the web. Will be all of our publications and reports will be going oh, into that kind of format as well. So people will just be able to tap in, script to our data and take it away. Take it away. Thanks very much for your time, Christy. It's been great to hear from you and about Saurig. Thank you. Thanks, Anthony.